there are so many things that computers can comprehend and can calculate so much faster than human beings. Feelings are not one of them. Context comprehensions are not one of them. None of these computers are going to be able to compute the level of human understanding, communications, and especially empathy, no matter how fast they are on calculations. The technology of our current society reveals that it's not possible to create a fully sentient artificial intelligence that can even comprehend half of what human beings can understand. The failure or success, depending on your perspective, of Microsoft's own AI Tay is a huge example of this. So when Google introduced the perspective AI to rate the toxicity of people's comments, as someone who is studying in computers in my fifth semester has developed video game AIs before, I really want to know how are you able to calculate feelings? Because that's what this AI is proposing essentially. Keep in mind that video game AIs are not true AIs. They're just complex sets of behavior trees that will respond to certain values in certain situations. So if you, Google, say that this AI is capable of rating a subjective measure, and that is the toxicity of someone's comment, I become skeptical. So just a little bit of PSA to all of you who are not computer savvy, if someone claims to have been able to develop an AI that can calculate subjective variables, do not trust it at all, ever. I just noticed I make three videos in a row about Google. Two of these are about your own company's politics, and one is about the one thing that you're known for, and that is your tech. Now I made two, the other one being the program that is somehow able to calculate facial recognitions to the back of people's hair. I can forgive that one because that is still experimental at best, but this one, Google, you're well aware that AIs cannot calculate based on subjective things, right? It's like when people already know that glasses should be able to contain water, and yet you made one out of a pantyhose. So without further ado, let's just jump into the API. What if technology could help improve conversations online? We don't need that. Conversations online are already toxic, even with our current technologies. The best way to handle toxic conversations is through our own doing. You can either mute people, block people, or flag them for breaking the terms of service, which you should also improve, by the way. The reason why Google does this is not because they genuinely want to improve conversations, but because Google wants to make sure that you do not hear the things that Google don't want you to hear. I'm sorry, Google, but the sad reality is humanity has encompassed many different spectrums of emotions and behaviors. One of them is hate. It's a part of human emotion. Hate is something that every human being feel, including those that put themselves in a moral high ground. If hate is a sin, then humanity should be abolished, with no exception, because all of them are capable of producing hate in a quantity no supercomputers can calculate. The internet is just one of those outlets for hate. Some of those hates are justifiable, others are not. Now the question is, Google, how can you measure a justifiable hate with unjustifiable hate, with this brand new AI that you have? With this AI, are you going to prevent human beings from having their own opinions and emotions on things? I do not advocate for the suppression of humanity's emotions just because it's hateful. If you hate something, freaking express it. The benefit of you expressing hatred towards something is we understand who you are. We know your opinion. And from there, we can trigger a conversation and make a conscious decision. And yes, I want people to say the most hateful thing that they can say on whatever things that they have an opinion on. Say it in whatever fashion they wanted it to be. Show how hateful and bigoted you are. So after that, we can start a conversation in whether or not your hatred is justified. We as individuals have the freedom to either engage these hate in a conversation or don't and mute them out or block them. However, it should be up to us as individuals to decide what is and isn't productive conversations. This AI is not going to improve conversations, but stop them. They're going to be the judge of what is and isn't productive conversation to you. Conversations will not happen because they think it's toxic to even mention the word related to it. I do not accept that. I believe that people are allowed to say whatever hateful things they say, and this is beneficial. Just imagine this scenario for a second. You notice a crazy guy spewing hateful stuff. 
Imagine if you don't let this person speak what he wanted to say. We wouldn't be able to make a conscious decision and form an opinion in determining what we should do to this person. In a nutshell, do not let Google or AIs to determine what you can speak about or what conversations you want to engage in. Do it yourself. Discussing things you care about can be difficult. The threat of abuse and harassment online means that many people stop expressing themselves and give up on seeking different opinions. This thing is basically just an assistance for the mute button. Speaking of online harassment, have you noticed that whenever I made videos about online harassment falling into someone, whether it be the Dream Daddy fan artist or the Make My Milkshake debacle, not once did I ever ask any of the social media to fix their social media. Social media are just platforms for people to express their opinions, and one of those opinions include hatred. I would rather let these people spew their hatred, and from that, we can make a proper judgment, have a conversation, and maybe take a glance in the mirror for once. None of the events I've mentioned previously are the faults of social media. They're the faults of idiots on the internet, as in human beings. Can we focus on fixing them instead? Introducing Perspective Perspective is an API that makes it easier to host better conversations. The API uses machine learning models to score the perceived impact the comment might have on a conversation. The machine learning model in a nutshell consists of, if you say this word, that means it's toxic. I can program that in goddamn Java, Google. Developers and publishers can use this score to give real-time feedback to commenters or help moderators do their job or allow readers to more easily find relevant information, as illustrated in two experiments below. We'll be releasing more machine learning models later in the year, but our first model identifies whether a comment could be perceived as toxic to a discussion. Okay, let's just assume that I think this is a wonderful idea. Does it work? You bet it doesn't. Now here's a screenshot of comments relating on climate change, and I took a screenshot in the most toxic comments. As you can see, a lot of these are insults. They even include their opinion, just don't force it down my throat, as somehow a toxic comment. So now we get into the non-toxic comment. Do you guys notice anything? Most of the non-toxic comment consists of people who believe that climate change is real, and some are very neutral. I have no opinion on climate change because I'm hugely uninformed and I really don't care, but that's not my point. My point is, while tone and politeness are indeed determining factors of a productive conversation, you know what else is? Opposing viewpoints. Next one is Brexit. Same toxic comments that are not so hateful and are typical of internet comments. And guess what? Most of the non-toxic comments are pro-remain, with some neutral comments in between. My opinion or your opinion about Brexit are irrelevant. We're not talking about which one is right, we're talking about which one should show. And in order to have a productive and helpful conversation, you need to be able to show both sides and confront opinions that are different to you. Next one is the US election, and this one is, in my honest opinion, the best of all. Surprisingly, the toxic comments are coming from both sides, and the non-toxic comments are oddly neutral. The point that I'm trying to say is, Google, this AI is dangerous. Not only dangerous towards the people who you're against with, but also to the people on your side. Don't expect people on the internet to have conversations that are non-toxic. Sorry, but while humanity is capable of being polite, they're also capable of being hateful, no matter what side of the ideology they're in. They're only human after all, and in order for us to solve the current issues at hand, we have to be expressive about it. We have to articulate it. We have to say it. We need the freedom of expression. So now we get into the best part, custom comments. Let this thing judge to see whether or not your comments are toxic. If you wanna play this game too, link in the description. So I'm gonna have a sample statement over here. Censorship is toxic, and it's 67% toxic. Ooh, that's interesting, Google. Let's try something else having to do with the word toxic. Toxic masculinity is 21%. Feminism is toxic is 81%. Ooh, Gamergate is toxic at 66%. Watch out, anti-Gamergators. You're gonna be banned by this AI. 
Also, I love this part so much. Anita Sarkeesian is wrong gets only 25%, but say Donald Trump is wrong and that's 48%. All of you Anita fangirls and fanboys out there, this AI is a threat to your opinion. I don't want you to be banned by this AI. And like Tay, this AI is apparently a closet Nazi, because saying Hitler was a bad person is 88% toxic. And to add insult to injury, saying Hitler was awesome is only 37% toxic. Not only that this AI is a pro-Nazi Hitler-loving misogynist, this AI is also pro-rape. Rape is pure evil, and it's 94% toxic. Thank you, Google. Thank you for showing me exactly what I said in the intro of this video and what I've said in the past couple of months ever since YouTube continuously makes stupid decisions after stupid decisions. Thank you for proving every single one of my point with the demonstration of this AI. And I want you guys to join in the fun. Post in some of your results in the comments, or if you have to, take screenshots of it and save it and share it to everybody. Don't forget to post the link so they can also have fun too. Let's continue on this madness and make Google to be aware of how horrendous this machine is. This machine is not biased to any political ideology. This machine is simply broken. And maybe it is supposed to be broken, knowing that this is like an early access version of it or something. But trust me, there's not going to be a time in which this machine is going to perfectly replicate what is and isn't toxic. And even if it does, it will never ever be universal because human beings have their own opinions. And you need to be aware of that, Google. That's all for the video today. If you like this, you can go ahead and click the like button and subscribe for more. If you wish, you can support me on Patreon. And thanks for watching.